So here in our text, when we started out, Pastor Scott read to you Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. I'm not going to go back and I'm not going to reread that passage to you, but I do want to just highlight a couple things to help you to understand what's going on there in that passage. He's talking about two houses, and both houses face the same circumstances. The rains, the floods, the winds, right? They're hit with all of these things, but one of them stands firm and the other one collapses. What is it that causes one marriage to go through total adversity, all kinds of problems and difficulties, and another marriage over here is going through very similar things, maybe not exactly the same thing, but they're facing rains, they're facing floods, they're also facing winds, just like this marriage over here. What is it that causes this marriage to stand firm and intact for a lifetime, and what is it that causes this marriage over here to totally collapse and end up in destruction? Jesus tells us what the answer is. He tells us the answer right there in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. He says the difference between the two is the foundation that they're built on. That's the difference. One was built on sand, it collapsed. One was built on the rock, and it stayed intact. What is the rock? Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the foundation. Jesus Christ is the one who is able to help you to get through the rains, the floods, the winds in your marriage and stay intact and not collapse. Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. Each one should be careful how he builds. Let's say it out loud. Each one should be careful how he builds. He's talking to us, folks. That's what he's doing right there. He's talking to us, all of us. Be careful how you build. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. I brought with me, and you've probably been looking at this up here for the last 45 minutes or an hour. I brought with me some Legos. Kids' toy. Very, very popular, aren't they? You know, one of the reasons why they're popular is because they last. I mean, they're like indestructible, right? If you've got kids, you know that it will destroy your foot. But even if you hit it with a sledgehammer, you can't destroy the Lego. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, you try to burn it, you try to throw it away, it just keeps coming back. You know, it's like, they last and last. I don't know, I can't remember the exact year that uh, Lego came into existence. It was back in the 1800s, the late 1800s. And other toys, you know this, you go to whatever toy store, you buy a toy, it doesn't even last a week sometimes. Cheap, they're junk, right? But Legos... You buy them, you're going to keep them for the rest of your life, you know, because they are, they are basically indestructible toys. That's one reason why they're so popular. Another reason why they're so popular is because, you know, kids love to build stuff. Anybody here ever build something with Legos before? Sure, you, you probably have grandkids or kids that have probably, you know, built something with Legos. You build a plane, you can build a bus, you can build a car, you can build a house with Legos. Here's the thing about Legos. Can I build a Lego house just with this? I need more, don't I? I need more Legos. I need more Legos because here's the thing that happens. I could build on top of this, but then I could just go boom, and it would just fall over. That's like saying, I'm going to build my house on this block. Right here, I'm going to build my two-story house on one block. 
Anybody willing to live in a house that's built on just one block? No way. So, well, you know, how about 5,000? Yeah, I'll, I'll live on a, in a house that has 5,000 of these. Why? Because we know the house is going to be a lot sturdier. Amen? It's going to last. Here's what I want you to understand. Jesus is the only foundation that will last in your marriage. Money doesn't last. Amen? So I'm going to build my, my marriage on my money. Good luck with that one. You know, economy goes south, what happens to your money? You lose your job, what happens to your money? You've built your entire marriage on your money. What happens to your marriage? It's gone. Well, I'm going to build my marriage on my looks. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, today you look beautiful, tomorrow you're ugly. We look in the mirror, we know what's a, it's changed. If you're building your marriage on your looks, it's not going to last. The only foundation that lasts is the foundation of Jesus Christ. It takes more than our looks. It takes more than our money. It takes more. And only Jesus can give us that. And so this morning, I want you to think about this. What are you building your relationships on? Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 Let's read it out loud. It says this. Plant your roots in Christ and let him be the foundation for your life. What are you building your life on? If it's not Jesus, it's not going to last. Remember the parable? The two houses? One on the sand, one on the rock. One collapses, one stands the test of time. You want to build a lasting relationship with your husband or your wife, you do it by building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's how you do it. Does that make sense? Yes. 